All right, we're on the site. We're gonna be doing a garage right over here, about 20 by 25. I'm just gonna, I just checked this patio to make sure it was parallel with the house. And it is at both ends. So we're just gonna pull a line right down this patio edge. And then we'll do, it'll be about a three foot offset to one end of the garage. So inevitably there'd be a planner area, probably three feet wide across here, then the driveway. So we'll start the edge of garage three foot in from this patio slab. Also what this does, this gives me, you know, a parallel line with the house for the building. That's what we're establishing here. Now everything on this building will work from that line. Now here's the drawing. Here's your front end elevation. That'll be your garage door opening, 16 foot, eight foot high. There, we got a window on both, both sides. And we also have a passenger door on one side. We've got, now on the foundation details, we got a 12 inch by 12 inch continuous turn down. That means the footing is turned down below into the into the ground below the um, top slab so we got four inch concrete slab with fiber mesh reinforcing or number three rebar 24 inch centers so you can do either or or you can do both in this case i'll just do both why not yeah we got a little more detail on the footing right here here's a couple bars in view there's two bars in that footing, and it's number eight, so we go to number eight. Two number four bars continuous, top and bottom, there and there. Three inches clearance off the ground. That's, you know, three inch dobies or chairs, whatever. Um, what else we got here? Here's your hold downs for the building. It's a metal building we're doing, it's gonna be you just set it up, set your channel, and then you start popping in your uh, risers or studs, your steel studs, after you get that steel plate set. Let's get the exact dimensions. Oh, here it is. Oh, okay. Foundation plan. Overall outside dimension is 20 feet across here, and their length, 25 feet 2 inches. Okay, let's go do that. All right. Man. Shoot it and shoot it good. There it is. Bingo. Let's just check this slab over here, see what the difference is. Hey, this is pretty darn good. It's pretty flat. Wow, it's a lot flatter than I thought it was here. That's pretty darn good. I might come up more on that. Maco Luca. What's a boy doing? Maco, what you doing there, boy? Look at all that dirt you got on you. <laughs> uh, what was that? Six, eight, ten will do? Yeah, so we'll just do eight. Seven. Oh, yeah, seven. So this is really my six. Six side. Now we'll do a niner. really a, it's really an eight but we're burning one so six eight this should be ten but top we're gonna take, take. we're gonna go eleven though yep. yeah we're off about three quarters of an inch short three quarters short so we just gotta shift her that way huh shift her that way Want to shift it this way? Oh wait, we're short. It's got to go out. 
Yeah, it's got to go out. Tyler's going to have to buy breakfast for us since she wasn't helping. That's the penalty. Penalty phase. Huh? Yeah. Sounds good to me, man. Hey, Brent, how's it going? You remember being over here before? Yeah, now it kicked to me. Yeah. Hey, how's it going? Good. Good. That's uh, Doug, my hey, brother. Doug. Morning, he won't be here long, but my son will be here today with us. Yeah, I got to roll home. Morning. This is it over here. <laughs> That's my son, Tyler. Morning, Tyler. Morning. This is just a batter board where we pulled oh, yeah. the string line off of. Oh, but do. this is it. It's 20 by 25 here, one foot deep. All right, so as we go around this, as he digs it out around here, I'm going to check it from time to time with the laser level just to make sure that um, the footing, the bottom of that footing is level all the way around. The pad itself may not be exactly level, so when I go to put the base in, that'll be a variable depth on that to make it level, but I want to do the footing level to start with. And that's where the laser level comes in handy, really works well for block walls, foundations, because they're always level. They always start, they could have step downs in them, but everything else is level. As we dig this out, I'm adding water to it and spraying some water down on it, just to keep the dust down. Also, it helps firm it up. The more water I can get in there, the better. Now that we have it all dug out, I'm just going to clean up all the loose stuff, get all the spoils out of the footing. That we have a good base for that foundation to set on. This particular trench right here is going to be my electrical. I'm going back to the power pole with this. I'm going to run a one inch conduit and I'm going to sweep it up into this uh, foundation right on the edge wall. You know, I'm going to put it in about uh, two inches off of the edge so it'll be within a wall. And then that panel, you'll have a panel, of course, a sub panel, but the electrical conduit will be within a wall. Now here's the road base that I'm going to put in. I'm not going to put a whole lot in here because this pad was pretty flat and I didn't want to get too elevated here because I kind of want to, I'm, I'm a little bit higher than the patio. I'm probably, this garage floor is going to be about three inches higher than the lowest point of that patio, which means when I put the driveway in, there'll be a little slope back to it, but there will be a planter in between the two. So that can make up the difference in that three inch ch uh, elevation change that planter bed area in between driveway and, uh, and patio. This is where I, my stockpile of base is. This is some leftover base from when I initially um, built the foundation for the actual house. That's in some other videos. All these videos are within, it's on the playlist. It's a property development series on the playlist. And, you can see uh, the house getting set, everything, and the dig out for it, the retaining wall, all those little details. With this, we're gonna this particular video, we're gonna take you through the entire dig. Uh, also, we're gonna show the setup, the form setup. We're gonna get uh, inspections on here. The inspector will be showing up pretty soon once I get this all ready. Of course, I have to get him to sign off before I can put the concrete in here. I'm using two by 12s and this ground is really rocky as you can tell by just looking around at it. So round stakes is really what you want to use here, but I have flat stakes. So instead of buying round ones, I'm going to make the flat ones work. It's a little more harder. It's harder to drive because they want to twist and move with the round stakes. They'll try, they'll find a way in between the rocks, but flats are a little more difficult. All these two by 12s are leftovers. If you look far across at that form, see the crown in it, the big crown in that two by 12? That's the problems with two by 12s. They do warp and crown. 
and that crown does come into play when we go ahead and start building this uh, metal building which will be in another part to this series and that'll be happening real soon but what I was intending on doing is rotting low on that crown on that 2x12 but it had set for so long before I poured I had forgot about that crown being there so we had a little hump in the foundation and it made it a little more challenging for the metal building but the way these metal buildings are designed, they're so forgiving that um, we made it work just fine. If you noticed my dog Max walking around, this video is about two years old. I've been waiting and waiting until I got everything ready to get this video up. But uh, Max is no longer with us. And you probably had seen, maybe you've seen that video too, the, uh, when I built him a tomb, concrete tombstone. But uh, this is pretty much his last job that he was on with me. So I ran out of two by 12, so I went ahead with a two by eight, two by six, whatever I had, you know, because I didn't want to buy a lot of extra lumber. So what I'll do is I'll underpin that with a two by four probably. Which is kind of nice if you can underpin with two by fours or any kind of scrap. Because if your concrete comes up on the outside and locks in your two by 12, uh, you might waste a two by 12. But if you've got a two by four underpin and it gets locked, well, you only lose a two by four instead of a two by 12. Now, the plans, like I'd show, I was showing you a little earlier, it called for uh, fiber mesh. Or you could put the reinforcement at two foot centers, but I'm going to go ahead and do both. I'm not using a uh, steel reinforcement. I'm using uh, Owens Corning uh, fiberglass bars. Also, you can see on the distance over there, I'm setting up uh, a 12 by 10, and that'll be for the pump house for the well. And I'm, gonna, I'm building that in that location, but that's not really where it's going to be uh, poured or placed. So here's what it looks like when you're ready for inspection. So we're got about uh, two feet below top of slab to the bottom of that footing. And we're raised above um, the exterior. Uh, the native were raised probably on this one end we're about eight inches above on the uh, the lowest end we're only about four to six inches because the lots kind of on a slope here there's my conduit and I've pinned that against the form with a little block that way when the concrete hits it it won't shift on me that happens with rebar too when you're putting concrete in around uh, steel reinforcement it'll try to move it and push it out so you always have to stabilize that stuff pretty good or have someone on a shovel holding it in place while, while it's being filled up here's the screed pin right here that establishes a level and you know you could do it perfectly level typically most people would do these foundations just level all the way across hey how's it going, how's it going? good here's the info uh, the only thing is you guys have special inspections have you guys had those done no we have it just for the bolts yep and so we can't do footing until that's complete the bolts is the building, and the building gets fastened to it. Mine said bolt and concrete. Mine says bolt and concrete, which they normally do that prior. You have to have those in like little brackets and set in place before, and special inspected before. Um, it's a drill. It's a drill expansion bolt, so you can't so, put them in until the building's in. The building goes. I don't think you can use those on those red irons. It's not a red iron. Be... This is a. This is the drawing from the um, building manufacturer. I've never seen it shows the whole design. It's an engineered drawing. It shows exactly how it's being fastened on there. So you're just gonna have a, how are you gonna have a special inspection on an expansion bolt though? No idea. That's that's weird. Yeah, I've never enough. seen them. You'll I mean, so you'll probably have to revise that then with the county because mine state it's it's bolts in concrete. 
Well, that'll be the next inspection, right? Today, it's just the foundation. Yeah, we're not allowed to do, we can't even look at your foundation without that special inspection done, complete. That doesn't make sense. Because 99% of these, any metal building, they the there's little brackets and those those anchor bolts go down like 12 inches 15 inches whatever it is yeah but this is the engineer drawing see that stamp right, right well, there he's the one that says that you need he's he's going to be the one that tells the county hey he needs special inspections on his bolting no yeah but he didn't because see here it is right here it's an expansion anchor or equal you see that see the detail Yeah, with a two and five eighths embedment. Uh huh. So he's the way he's stating it to. I'm gonna verify, but the way he's stating it in my packet from from Mojave County is he wants those in prior to the pour. Uh no, that so, doesn't. That's not saying that at all here. Yeah, that, that's what he's saying to us, and he's the engineer, so I can't override him. And he's the one that's got my, you know. Boy, look at it right here. Take a look at this. This is pretty simple to see. Right. Well, that's the rail, yeah. Yeah, that mounts to the ground. So right here you have bolts installed in concrete, yes, per, per your per your engineer. Yeah, it's these bolts right here. So these expansion right, bolts. Right, but how is he gonna inspect that is what I'm asking. He's gonna look at it and he's gonna test the torque of them to see if they're tight. Because yeah, I've never we've I've never run across this before. I've done hundreds of these and they're always the bolts that are installed in. Do you have a footing detail? Yeah. No, right like there. a foundation. Because, I mean, that's nothing but a redhead. Two and five eighths, that's nothing but just a redhead that you're going to just put in. Yeah, it's expansion bolt. That's, that's not special inspection. Well, they wanted them to check the torque of those bolts. Yeah, but you can't even torque it that much. I mean, a, a redhead, what are you going to do? I mean, you're just going to There's torque. With... There's a torque test you can put on them. On a redhead? Yeah. No way, they'll just keep spinning. No, you can they won't. just keep. Oh, I've, I've taken those things through bottom plates. You can you can just keep going. There's no torque on those. It, there's a certain torque. Yeah, I mean, but I mean. To it, yeah. And if they fail, if they don't reach that torque, they're no good. Right. I don't know. I've never seen that, so I'll have to verify with our plans examiner. I signed off your electrical groundwork for that, and we'll set back in the footings. All right, so thanks. All good to go. Yep. Cool. Yeah, sorry about that this morning. I've yeah. never, uh, I even talked to my plans examiner. I have a feeling the engineer just marked it when it really didn't need to be marked. That's so what I think happened. I got a feeling, yeah, because I've never seen them on, how are you going to, I mean, yeah, unless you, they're going to stand there and make sure you're blowing out your holes and stuff, but I mean, it's a freaking redhead. Yeah. Who cares? I think that's what they want. Yeah, no? probably. They want me to call this guy Western Technology to watch me blow the holes out. Really? I think that's what it is. Wow. Just to get somebody a little bit of money. Yeah, that's yeah. $700 actually. Right, yeah. That's like, what he, he wants 700 just for that little uh, deal. Yeah, I've never seen it. This is, that's why I mean, it's such a small little pad anyway. So that was interesting. The, the inspector came back. I mean, he was only gone about an hour and a half, two hours. I called everybody, um, you know, the engineer, the building department, everybody to try to figure out why I couldn't get this passed initially. But he ended up coming right back, and then um, they all figured it out that, you know, there's a torque test on, on on expansion bolts that have to be met, and that's why there's a special inspection. So you're going to see the special inspector out here as well, and he's going to be testing those. Um, actually, that's going to be in the next part after the build because we can't really do um, special inspection until the concrete's in. In this video, we're just going to show the concrete placement. Also, I'm doing color hardener on this. I'm doing a green color hardener, and then I'm going to power trial it in. It's a nice color. Um, it gives it a harder surface. Ran out of concrete. That was my first uh, 10 yards in there, and I think it was yards short or something like that. It might have been a 12-yard load. I'm not real sure. Yeah. I forget now. It's been two years, but... Here is the color hardener. Like I was saying, we're throwing a color hardener on here. And you can see that crown in that two by 12. Notice how it is a little, I did I did rot it a little low, but just not low enough. Yeah, because it was still about an inch high when I started building on this, I noticed. This is s, &S Concrete. They're the ones that delivered this concrete to me. 
Joseph, the main man down there, runs operations. He uh, lined it all up, made sure I got concrete out here on schedule, on time, and a good load. So, man, you know what happened? I had this, it was hard to get concrete, right? So I was slub out, you know, I was only out here for a weekend or whatever doing all this stuff, because this is kind of a side project for me. But uh, the wind kicked up, I had the concrete order, I couldn't get it any other days. I was like two weeks out at the batch plant or something like that. But uh, then the wind was about 40 mile an hour, man, and that's really bad for concrete. You don't, you wanna try to avoid pouring concrete where it's in the direct wind but I went ahead and went for it anyway. Luckily, I have a chain fence right behind me. And what I did was I threw, um, first thing I did is I put plastic, six mil plastic up against that chain link fence, which really broke the wind around this slab. It's kind of like a wind shelter I built, in other words. And that helped a lot. Without that, this thing would have cracked into um, little bits and pieces. See the plastic back there in the background a little bit on that? I didn't have to even uh, tie that plastic up. The wind itself just locked it against that chain link. All, it was blowing out of the north when we just stuck it there. And here's that color hardener. The concrete was acting a little funny because we're still getting a little breeze on this. We broke, we cut it down to about 15 mile an hour wind, but you know, it was a nice improvement from 40. So we throw the color hardener on there and with the wind blowing over it, you, you normally would like to have bleed water come up to lock in that color hardener, but in a real dry, windy climate, you're not gonna get much bleed water ever. So we, I actually added water, you know, through, from the water hose and then troweled it in and that works fine. And then I broke out the power trowel because I'm going to do a slick finish on this. So I'm just going to keep hitting this with the power trowel until it's smooth as glass. That's the objective here. Once you can see your reflection in the concrete, it's about right. Here's Joseph and his brother Eddie. They just arrived. Um, these are the guys that work S and S. You got your loader operator, does your gravel and sand, which is Eddie. He's since been promoted now. And then you got Joseph. He's your batch man. And they uh, poured. I got poured out late, so this is the. They came out here. They've already got all their loads out for the day. And then they came out here on their little side by side. Nice little side by side. Um, expensive one, but. They just drove that over here because you know they're street legal over here. All these um, off-road vehicles can be street legal out here in Arizona in this particular area. So they came over. I give them a whirl. There's Tyler getting a chance on that on a, uh, his first time running that power trial. Also, I gave. Uh, I think I let Joseph and Eddie. I let them. I let everybody run the power trial. Also, since I had a loader operator here and Eddie. Uh, from the batch plant, uh, I let I put him on my mini skid, and he really had fun with that thing. He made it look easy too. So we had some debris blowing on the concrete. We just swept it off there, as you noticed. This is probably the, the next day. I kept this thing wet. You know, I basically ran a sprinkler on this thing almost for three days straight. Yeah, this is the next day, the day after the pour, and you can see how green that concrete is from that color hardener. So it's gonna stay that color without the white mineral deposits from the water, of course. That'll eventually go away. But now we're running a Medusa, and we're we're uh, putting in some control joints for cracking, crack control, basically. So if the concrete does want to crack, it'll crack in the weakest point. And when you make a cut, now you're creating a weak point in the concrete. So it's the thinnest where that cut is. 
So that's where it's going to crack. And it worked out well. I think these are about seven foot squares. Let's see, we got, so the one, way, one direction it's 10 foot, and the other direction it's about eight feet. So, you know, 10 by eight. So on the inspection, um, yeah, he came right back and he realized that uh, he had just not seen one of these type of buildings um, with the expansion bolts and the torque tests and stuff like that. Fortunately, I've seen it many a times because I've been doing it for about 40 years. So I already knew. So here's what it turned out like, and it looked, turned out real nice. Of course, I'll put a sealer over that too. Here's my Ufer bars. Those are called Ufers, which is your ground rod. And that's tied into the steel going around the perimeter, um, all the way around the footing. And there's my wind barrier. Anyway, thanks for watching this video. Make sure you like, share, subscribe. Hit the notification. That way you'll see the next one because we're going to get the same inspector coming out here for the metal building. He's going to do the final, basically. That's, so it's only two inspections. We've got two inspections on this whole process all the way to the final product from zero to finished product move in with two inspections. Really nice. It worked out really well. And... Uh, Thanks for watching. Have a good one.